So this is the nine. This fight, uh, the most dangerous part of this fight is when all three bosses come down. That's when you want to lust. Um, once you kill two bosses and you're left with just the last boss, it's pretty much free. Our very first kill, we had some incredible mistakes and we still one-shot it. Uh, this is our re-clear, so it's going to look a lot cleaner. Um, looking at our comp, you can run, um, again, whatever two tanks, it doesn't matter. Prop Paladin brings pretty good value because you're able to spell ward the raid soak. So out of all the tanks, I think Prop Paladin is probably, probably brings the most to this fight, um, but you can get away with like whatever tanks you want. Five heal, no reason to four heal this. There's no damage check. Only thing that will kill you is like ticking damage and you know, random overlaps that deal a ton of damage. So just bring five healers, don't worry about it. DPS, bring whatever you'd like. Um, it does not matter. I don't think I ever got fragments on this. So let me show you how we deal with fragments because that's the main thing that is going to that might cause you issues. So with fragments, you get you get four of them total, right? Um, I'm just gonna drag down four random marks. These are the players who get fragments, right? You're killing the bosses, they're stacked. I believe these are the two that you start with. We make him a chonky boy, there we go. Um, so you're hitting the bosses. These four players, which are the four marks, get fragments. So there are a couple of ways of dealing with this. The first and simplest way, it requires no weak auras, nothing at all, is just run to the edge. All four players run to the edge and get dispelled one by one. So you dispel Moon, um, they run away. You dispel Blue, they run away. You dispel Purple, they run away. All the fragments are now on X, they coalesce, drop the puddle, X runs away. That is the easiest way. Um, however, it can cause some issues if you end up with three stacks of the fragment on one person. Um, because if there's any other raid mechanics going on that are dealing damage to that person, they might die without the personal. So at low gear levels, it might cause issues. Once you're like, um, you know, full geared, like, 240 some eye level, it doesn't matter all that much. But at low eye level, there's another strat you can do that gets rid of that issue. And that is the two and two dispel. So let's say again, these four people get, get fragments. They run to the edge. You have two people stand on the outside, two people stand on the inside on each other. You dispel one of the inside people, they run away. You dispel one of the outside people, they run away. Now you end up with two stacks on this person, two stacks on this person. Now you can dispel either one of them and the fragments will disappear. So this gets rid of the issue of having um, randomly three stacks on one player, which might kill them. So that's the strat that we did. You can either do this with a weak aura um, that just assigns, you know, if you're blue marker, you're on the inside. If you're X marker, you're on the outside. Um, or you can just audibly call it. There's a few ways of dealing with this, but either strategy you go with, it's super simple. Um, if you do two inside, two outside, it gets rid of some risks, but at higher gear level, I don't think it's going to matter too much. So overall, like for fragments, that is the only thing that you have to worry about. Always just take them to the edge. We take them like near the boss to the edge. So melee don't lose too much uptime. Um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much all there is to fragments. So pain points on this fight that you're going to wipe to are overlaps that are kind of difficult to deal with. Uh, they mostly happen in the last phase because in the first phase, when all three bosses are down, you typically just lust and get through it without really having to use your brain. Um, I think in this pool, we actually lost on pool by mistake. So you, you'll get to see the overlap a bit better. Um, we get both of these bosses down to 
30% health at the same time. Um, so just make sure your DPS, you know, are swapping based on whichever boss is higher. Whenever the small ads spawns, just grip it in, kick it. We didn't even assign interrupts. It just gets gripped and dies. Um, you get dodges, just move out of it. Um, this first, so these debuffs, the raid soak, whenever you can just solo it, there's almost no reason to keep it in the raid if you have like an immunity um, or are able to solo it in some way. If not, just put it on the raid. It doesn't deal that much damage, especially in phase one. When there's nothing else happening, it's not that big of a deal. Um, Song of Dissolution. Make sure you interrupt that as fast as possible. Ideally, you want your tanks on this or ranged kicks um, because melee sometimes have to move away from the boss right as this happens uh, and they're not able to get the interrupt. So either tanks or ranged DPS, just keep an eye on this, make a weak aura for it, interrupt it as soon as it happens. Um, on our first kill, I believe we went up to three stacks because we missed an interrupt uh, and that almost wiped us. So just keep that in mind. In phase one, that's pretty much the only thing that's going to wipe you. Now you have to run away from the boss. Stampeding Roar, Wind Rush, both of them are really good. Um, for the runaway one, Stampeding Roar is a bit better. For the stay in the circle, Wind Rush is a bit better. So just use those um, for those spots. Not, not much else to it. Now third boss comes down. This is where you normally lust. So you lust, kill the two old bosses, then you only have one boss to deal with. Um, since we use lust on pull, we don't have it here but pretty much just nuke down the two old bosses. So I actually get the fragments here and you'll see how we deal with it. We actually, so this is our second reclear. We didn't even do the two and two just because it didn't matter that much anymore. Um, but the simplest way is just dispel people as they get to the edge. Then when they get dispelled, they run away. Just make sure you wait between the spells so the person who got dispelled has time to run away. Otherwise, you're going to uh, risk them getting the buff, the buff back on the second dispel. Once you only have one of the bosses, this is where only overlaps are going to kill you. So you'll see I'll, I'm actually going to die to a pretty annoying overlap here um, a bit later in the fight. Early on, not much going on. Pretty much just deal with mechanics as they come up. Um, move out of this shield. So get soaks, spread, whatever happens, it's pretty straightforward. Players with the mind link debuff or spirit link, I actually forget what it's called, try to avoid doing mechanics as much as possible because for example, these purple puddles are up. If both players who are linked together stand in one of these, they're going to kill each other. So ideally, players without the link debuff do all the soak mechanics um, and so on. And players with the link debuff just kind of AFK turret the boss. There's only one overlap that's kind of bad. I'll point out when it happens. This is the bad overlap. So this right here, uh, for us, it's at 447, is the overlap that might kill you um, if you play it poorly. So you get raid soaks. So range DPS need to go out, pick up the purple circles. You get spread, the little spread circles. Ideally, people with the spread circles go out and soak. And you also get a raid soak at the same time. So if you're running a prop paladin, this is the one that you want to spell ward. Um, absolutely spell ward or immune if you have. Um, this one you do not want to raid soak because this is where you will have the fewest amount of available players to split the damage. Um, and I actually died to this here. There it is. Um, so normally that one just spell ward it or immune it. I would have lived if I didn't soak the purple on top of it. But that's the only like dangerous one. Um, keep in mind that no mechanic in this like phase is dangerous. It's just if you move out of a soak early, you're going to wipe your raid. Um, if you mess up the raid soak, you might kill one or two players, but nothing is going to like cause the pool to be over. So that's the nine, again, fairly easy boss. 
Um, first three bosses in this raid, pretty easy. Then come the big boys, because Ner'zhul and Sorander are both a pretty big step up from, from this fight.